Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. This is a follow-up video to my most recent video that I did on Harry's blind items. Today, this video is going to focus on Meghan Markle's blind items. So let's go down memory lane. We begin, unlike Harry, with Meghan's first blind item popping up in November of 2016. This is a burn and I'll tell you why. This foreign-born A-plus list celebrity hates the new actress girlfriend. Our A-plus lister is usually super quiet about her feelings, but not this time. Basically, it is as close to blast as she does. Now, I don't know how true this is or not. Remember, this is from the very beginning, and I think hate is such a strong word. Like, if you were to ask her today, yeah, I think she would use that word hate, maybe even a little bit worse than what we would be able to say on YouTube. But what I can say is it's funny that Megan's entry into the celebrity gossip just so happens to be off of Harry. And not only is it about Harry, but her first entry is with Princess of Wales, which... <laughs> <laughs> I think in some way it's some cosmic karma that is going to unveil itself as we go along. This next one, we're still in the phase of people just finding out who Meghan Markle is because she's dating Harry, says this B-list, mostly television actress on a hit cable show, now has much higher name recognition than she probably thought she would get. I'd have to add in there ever. <laughs> Apparently, she doesn't want to endanger her new status and paid her ex $50,000 to stay quiet about dates and timelines. Her friends are all selling some very damaging information about her to the tabloids. They must be talking about Corey Vitiello. And this is an indication considering this is back since 2016. Remember, in Tom Bauer's book, he did allude to multiple different dates from June to May to July. I believe this, and it's probably a reason as to why Corey never said anything about her. So now we're in 2017, and it says, beginning of the year, this alliteration actress told one of her closest friends that she is trying to get pregnant. It seems, though, her foreign-born A-plus list celebrity boyfriend is not privy to that information. Now, this is my opinion. Whether or not this is true, I don't have any evidence. However, I've heard rumors that there was some sort of uh, some foolery going on where she had communicated to her now husband that she was pregnant at the time to kind of trap him. Women like Meghan Markle would do just about anything, like poke holes in the condom, save whatever sperm that's there and turkey base it up herself. There's no doubt in my mind that she tried some of these techniques in order to get that bag, so they say. This next one turned out to be a fact. It says, our ginger royal is getting ticked off that his girlfriend is tipping off paps where they are headed when they go out. She is all about the publicity and can't wait for that new contract negotiation. We know that she has a habit of tipping off the paparazzi, as it was stated in Finding Freedom, as well as other publications. What's interesting here is that she probably thought she was going to get some multi-million dollar contract now, and probably found out that they were going to get rid of her after this last season. So... You know, it's interesting to look back and say, wow, she she really was all about her brand. And here we go. Following up now in July, this was posted. Something is going on. This B-list, mostly television actress from a very hit long running cable show, used to tell a few friends all the details about her relationship with this foreign born A++ list celebrity. Now, she always changes the subject. Well, Tom Inskip's wedding was in March of 2017, and by the looks of these photos, it sure looks like Meghan was doing some one of those desperate attempts to keep Harry from changing his mind, as it looks like he was kind of fed up with it. And what I notice is the mean girl look. 
especially when she was talking to the waiter as well as the friends that dared to interrupt. She, like, look at her. It's like she's talking to the guy and making him feel stupid, like he doesn't understand and her face is all tense. She looks so angry. And her fellow fans consider her to be the Black Messiah. Is that acceptable behavior to be treating the people of the Black race in such a demeaning way? I don't think so. I think she looks extremely condescending. Now, this is coming towards the engagement announcement. It says, apparently there are several dozen nude photos of this illiterate B-list, mostly television actress from a long-running cable show. Normally, this would not be a big deal, but in this case, it could be huge, especially if the plan for a specific website for the photos is put in place. I believe that there are photos out there. I mean, we do know that there are photos out there of her topless. However, I don't think it's several dozen, unless at this point, the palace was helping her trying to clean up her image, which is my understanding, and I have seen that a lot of things about her have been wiped from the internet. I think there's a lot that we don't know, and the palace has gone to major lengths to clean it up. From reading Tom Bauer's book and now reading some extracts from Valentine Lowe's book, Courtiers, the, all that is the central theme is talking about how the palace did their best to accommodate her to see that she would succeed. Now, here's a good one. It was dropped before the engagement announcement, September 4, 2017, but wasn't revealed until January 6, 2018. It says, This B-plus list, mostly television actress, on a very long-running cable show is in danger of losing that A-plus plus list boyfriend. Apparently, one time she yachted for a best friend of the A-plus plus lister. The man who paid her for the yachting had no idea she is the girlfriend of the A++ lister and thought the A++ lister wanted to hire the actress for yachting purposes. Awkward. You gotta imagine, though, that if this really did happen, let's say it did, after all that has happened with the family, the monarch, the abhorrent behavior, don't you think one of them would have come out or have leaked something to put it out there? Because at this point, who could actually say that they like these two anymore, especially for all the damage that they have made? The only explanation as to possibly why their close friends have not come out is because they probably themselves have dirt on them as well, right? So it's possible that they don't want to open a can of worms by throwing out the first grenade. But gosh, can't someone just take one for the team? I mean, this is for humanity purposes. <laughs> now here is where this turned out to be wrong. And I wonder if it was Megan that leaked this one. It says, another royal one for you. That new bride is going to be offered something for her wedding to wear that is an original, so to speak. It wasn't offered to the most recent big bride in that huge wedding. This would be huge. And apparently, this was the Spencer tiara that Diana wore. Now, I think, in my opinion, that Megan might have put that out there, just like she's put out other things where she has wanted, right? The invitations, the titles. This wouldn't surprise me if this was something she did. So January 16, 2018, this blind item was dropped saying, this foreign-born A++ list celebrity probably can't back out without looking foolish, but a lot more people are whispering about the past of his significant other. One thing that is very noticeable is at a recent event, the significant other worked hard to get the attention on herself rather than him. Further, there were only about 20 people who showed up, and the year previous, with that first couple in attendance, the number was about 10 times higher. And this is supposed to be allegedly Prince Harry and Meghan, Markle, Kate, and Prince William. What I think this was 
is the Christmas event where she showed up with that brown turd hat. In the U.S., I can't really comment because at that time back then, the U.S. wasn't paying attention to this couple, nor did we care. So we were getting our sugary puff pieces while the UK was probably starting to realize early on that she was this fraud. So this next one many of us have seen where it says this former B-list mostly television actress with an alliteration for her name told her ex she was unable to get pregnant. So this should all be very interesting the next year. And yes, we're referring to Trevor when she got married. Now, remember, uh, Mr. Markle had said that she had frozen her eggs and had gone to California. No, it was Toronto to go pick them up. Could it be that she brought them back so it could be implanted into a surrogate? It's possible. Also, let's not forget that in Tom Bauer's book, when it talked about Trevor, it was stating that he was ready to have children, and Megan was not into it, remember? So I wonder if she told him that to get him off her back, and she probably knew that she was not going to be staying with him for long term. Now this one has me thinking. It says, apparently when she was here in the U.S. for a brief amount of time, this former A- slash B plus list mostly television actress, all of you know, had one of her friends fly in to deliver some party supplies, which she had not been able to do for almost six months. Our former actress had one hell of a night. The timing sounds about right if this was dropped on April 23rd and then revealed on April 30th, then it would make sense considering that this article was published on April 18th, 2017. My question that I have is why Chicago? Why did she choose to go there and not New York? Could it be that she was catching up with somebody from Northwestern? Maybe. Now this one we need to keep in the back of our minds. It is very interesting that yachting photos of this former actress turned future bride popped up out of nowhere. There are way more detailed photos out there which are no big deal in the grand scheme of Hollywood things, but would be a very big deal to her future husband and his family, especially considering she hasn't told any of them about that part of her past. Seriously, if Netflix wants this show to be somewhat successful, this would be the story to cover. This next one says, This former actress turned upcoming bride arranged to have one of her exes paid $250,000 if he would remain silent about their past. It looks like it worked. My guess that was Trevor, but there's no doubt in my mind that she made him sign some sort of settlement clause where he can't say anything, and if he does, he would have to give that money back. But here's the thing. I bet she didn't think that what if Trevor would marry somebody who was, I think she is an heiress uh, to a billion-dollar fortune. So what's $250,000 in comparison to someone who now has or is worth the millions? He should open his mouth, give that money back, and let it rip. Now, here's something that just crossed my mind. The things that I'm reading out here, they're pretty defamatory, right? And this couple is known for being litigious. So here's my question to you guys. How much do you think that this is true? Because it's so defamatory, you would think that they would go after this website. Now I'm going to leave this one here and you guys can read it yourself. All I can say is that I don't know, but what I do know is that Megan was desperately trying to be a model for his wife, Georgina Chapman's fashion line called Marquesa. And she is seen pictured all over the place with Georgina Chapman. So make what you want of it. Let's not forget, let's not forget that in Tom Bauer's book, he does talk about the parties that she used to go to when she was on Deal or No Deal at Brett Ratner's house. Now, Brett Ratner knows this or hung out a lot with this disgraced producer. 
Let's not forget that the book did say that Megan was always the last one to leave. Just saying. Now this one we know is true. It says apparently this former actress turned bride invited a whole slew of A-plus list celebrities to her wedding. She had never invited because she wanted to meet them all. They are the same celebrities who would never have given her the time of day previous to this. Most of the people she invited said no because they thought it was weird to be invited if they had never met either person. One of those people is this A-plus list mostly movie actress who is an Academy Award winner nominee who showed the invitation to friends. Oh, right. I do remember this. It was Reese Witherspoon. It's now July 20th, 2018, when this was posted, saying, Apparently, when our favorite former actress was back in the United States a few months ago, she slipped her drug of choice past her protection via a friend. This time around, she is going to have to find a new way to get herself supplied. Oh, I have no doubts she will. It is one of the main reasons she is visiting. She misses that kind of partying, and she knows no one will dare arrest her if she is busted. It is partying without having to worry about any legal consequences at all. So I believe that they were referencing that April trip to Chicago. And if this is true, then it would make sense with having IPP status. If you are under the influence or if you test positive for drugs, you can't be arrested, which is interesting. Something to keep in the back of your mind. Who thinks if... The wife was subjected to a drug test today. Would she pass? Hmm. Oh, this probably made her furious, especially the people that she was bullying. How do you make a little extra money if you have no income and are not allowed to work to generate any income, but definitely have some things you want to buy and others you need to pay off to keep things quiet? Well, if you are this former actress, you get clothes from friends that were given to them for free that you will wear. You then have the person in charge of the checkbook buy those clothes at full market value. The friends then split the money with our former actress 50-50. She's actually making more money now from this little ruse than she's ever did acting or yachting. She was never a really big earner yachting-wise. Here is what I believe. This definitely did happen, and it was her and Jessica Mulroney who was running the side grift going on. You ever wonder why her clothes always seemed so ill-fitted and looked horrendous on her? Well, it was because after she was done with paying the most expensive amount for these designer clothes, she'd go off and sell it and then pocket the money, which in my mind, this is something a grifter would do if they knew that they were leaving. So it was like a money grab. Once she got in, she maximized each and every opportunity she had to take from the family. I believe the amount of money that was spent on these clothes, which she probably paid, or it, as it says here, most definitely full market value. So then that way, when she goes to resell it, then guess what? She can get three times as much because of the perceived status that she has and the willingness of people that would buy it at the time. Now, no, you couldn't get very much. Okay, on this one, I'm going to need my audience to help jog my memory. It says here, which it was posted on April 7, 2018, but then revealed on August 2018, says an author that is working on a book about the future royal couple found two more men who said that at the time, bit player on a network show was strictly pay for play. So I don't think that this was, no, this was not Talon Bauer. Maybe was it Tina Brown? I, I, I am drawing a blank on which author this would be, or would it be Andrew Morton? Oh, I bet it's Lady C. Guys, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts below. I'm not sure on this one. So now we're getting up to the point in time where they're about to go on their tour. So she's saying here, this illiterate former B-plus list, mostly television actress with the A-plus-plus list name recognition has been showing her diva side and complained to one of her friends 
that she doesn't really like interacting with regular people, but considers it part of the job. This bitch! It's all coming out in Valentine Lowe's book of how nasty this woman is. It is really interesting that the guy who arranged the initial pay-for-play date between this foreign-born permanent A-plus lister and his now wife is no longer welcome in the home by the wife. Guilt by association? Maybe she is afraid he will talk about the others. You can bet that she has been in the process of getting her exit strategy together to bounce because the shit is about to hit the fan really hard. And at some point, Harry's going to wake up and realize that he married a monster. And what is interesting is that even though Harry wants to sue both Tom Bauer and Valentine Lowe for this book, the wife does not want to go forward with it. And you know what I think is happening in the Casa de Montecito is she's probably telling him a whole bunch of lies right now to cover up the additional lies. And he's probably buying it because she has him so controlled. But I think there's going to come a time where he's going to wake up and he is going to lose his mind if he hasn't already. I do believe that when he does wake up, it will be too late, meaning he will be left with nothing. I bet she takes the kids, I bet she drains him dry, and I bet she kicks him to the curb when she finds the next victim. Okay, so now the date is October 18, 2018, when this was posted. It did not get revealed till October 26, but let's keep in mind what they were doing at that time. That was the date that they were down in Australia, and this is when the news broke that she was pregnant. Says, it looks like the news is starting to spread that this illiterate former actress, who is far more famous now than she would ever have been from acting, had to use IVF to get pregnant. I told you from the very beginning that she had always told her exes she didn't even think she could get pregnant. Apparently, with the help of science, she could. Again, this could be very defamatory, but Megan has not sued, so what do you guys think? I think this is true, especially since her father confirmed that she had her eggs frozen in Toronto. Okay, so help me out on this one. It's October 23rd, 2018 when this was dropped. They were still in Australia, but it was revealed on October 30th. It says the only reason this illiterate former actress wanted to come to the U.S. was to do a solo Coke and booze thing. With that not possible, she is rescheduling. What was she supposed to come over here for at that time? I don't remember there was anything special going on at that moment. I could be wrong, but comment below. This one, I was just shaking my head because I believe it. it. says here, apparently there are honorariums or gifts to charity made when a member of this family speaks at an event. However, this illiterate former actress is instead asking for the money directly so she can give it to several charities herself. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what they're doing with Archwell? So this is no different. The thing is, is that with Archwell, she could be as shady as F and hide 95% of the money and really give a percentage over while taking everything out in deductibles because it's tied to the business as business expenses. I'll bet you that that trip to the UK when they were over doing the Invictus Welch, well, not the Welch, but the One World nonsense and then going to the funeral i will bet you that they're going to expense that and cover that under as business expenses watch they they they're shameless and morally corrupt people that they would do that all right so notice the time frames november 10th 2018 it says Apparently, the diva behavior on a recent trip was nothing compared to the verbally abusive thrashing the employee took on that trip when things were not perfect. The employee threatened to sue because of how bad the abuse was, which would have become public. The employee instead was given a check and an apology by the in-laws of the former actress turned abuser. 
And we know, folks, that this is what Valentine Lowe is talking about. And this trip that they're talking about was Australia. Do we think that this was Melissa Tabati? Maybe. Do we think this was Sam Cohen? Sounds like it. Let me read you this passage from the excerpt or the extract, according to the UK Times. Let me set the stage. For those that don't know, Samantha Cohen was the Queen's former assistant private secretary, and she wanted to leave, but they asked her if she would step in and help out. So Cohen, then aged 49, had already handed in her notice at Buckingham Palace. But just as she was preparing to leave after 17 years, she was roped back in. She was one of the most popular and well-regarded members of the Queen's household. This is an instance where you need to trust your gut. You know how many times I have done things where I said, man, I should have trust my gut and left on a high note. So in the extract, it says the harsh treatment was not confined to junior staff. One source said that Samantha Cohen had been bullied. Another said they treated her terribly. Nothing was ever good enough. This paragraph is interesting. It says, In February 2021, the Duchess's lawyers denied that Cohen had been bullied, saying that the couple were always grateful for her support and dedication. And in quotes, she remains very close to the Duke and Duchess. Hmm. Well, could it be that she's close for a reason? Because they have her silence? Because they paid her off? I think so. Let's listen to the brutal treatment that she got. More than once, staff felt they were treated harshly. On the journey from Tonga to Sydney, Sam Cohen was said to have had a particularly torrid time of it, according to one source. Sam had been screamed at before the flight and during. After that, she warned other staff to stay away from Harry and Meghan for the rest of the day. That evening, her colleagues tried to arrange matters so that she did not have to see Harry and Meghan any more than was strictly necessary. It was so horrible to see yesterday, one said the next day. According to one source, David Manning, who was always reassuring presence on tours, would say, you are dealing with a very difficult lady. Now, I'll be honest, somebody who has spent 17 years with the Queen, to then be disrespected by this low-life, nobody actress, man, you know, I really do see the British are so polite and so dignified, but this was a moment to where she needed to get told off. I would have told her to take the job and shove it up her ass. Sorry. It's just so infuriating to see this and this horrible human being be allowed to continue to hurt and exploit people. So now looking back and reading these, you you cannot deny that there was some severe problems early on. And this was not, you know, gossip. It says here, don't believe the hype. These two royals are anything but BFF. The illiterate one doesn't even want to try any longer to get along because the foreign one knows what's up and has been whispering in the ear of the husband of the illiterate one. So the move out. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that Catherine tried to talk to Harry about this because around this time, that's when Prince William started to talk to the staff to ask them if they were okay. And you had one bursting into tears. So no doubt they knew that she was a bully and what she was doing to the staff. And like a little bitch that she is, wanted to get out of there because she doesn't know how to handle conflict, especially when she throws out these grenades and then thinks that she doesn't have to face anybody to tell her that what she did was wrong. So what does she do? She ignores it. She wants to move away. She doesn't want to have to deal. That's why the funeral was such a slap in the face to her, because I guarantee she wouldn't have wanted to go if she was in Montecito and she would have done everything that she could have to stay behind because she can't face the people that she has treated terribly because she's an asshole like that. And uh, yeah, I apologize for cursing so much, but this makes me so angry when you look at how her behavior 
has been so terrible and still people were kind to her. People were generous with her and did everything for her. And she still kicked them in the back. It has to stop. And that's why we do these vlogs. It's to make people aware that this woman has abused her power and her position because of who she is married to. And she should not be allowed anymore. And that's why Meghan Markle needs to be canceled, period. I think it's really good that we're revisiting these because a lot of this stuff has been buried under the rug. And I think it's important that we keep it at the forefront so we can continue to investigate and ask questions. Like this one, it says, the wheels move slowly in the weekly tabloid world. Well, let's take a pause here for a second. You got to understand she had been pumping out piece after piece after piece. So this type of stuff, of course, got suppressed, says the times they are changing for this illiterate former actress turned A plus list celebrity. They are sending out trial balloons through some of their outlets that are challenging the official timeline of when she split with one guy and started dating her current husband. So meaning Corey Vitiello. Within the next few months, they will accuse her of cheating. Will they ever accuse her of getting paid to date her current husband? They probably won't go that far. You know, it's all about timing. The queen is gone now, so the gloves are off. And I think that this, if this is true, it needs to come out. Back then, people were afraid. But now, since more people have come forward, I think we're going to see it. And we're going to see it come October when Tom Bauer's book is launched here in the United States with those extra chapters. I'm sure there's going to be some juicy little nuggets in there that's going to set this on fire. Moving on, it says, apparently the illiterate royal is going full on diva and lucky for us complains to her friends that she doesn't get enough respect and that she only wants to go to the fun events. She is convinced every one of the staff hates her. You think? They probably do. It wouldn't shock me if they end up moving to a different country for a couple of years. She's going to ask... She would love to live in Canada for a few years. Now, I believe this 100% because in the second excerpt that was dropped by the Times for the courtiers by Valentine Lowe, it says in the actual paragraph, it says, when Harry and Meghan went to Canada for their six-week break in November 2019, their escape plans were already laid amid the greatest secrecy. Meghan could not even tell their nanny, Lauren, where they were going. According to one source, she did not know where they were going until the plane, a private jet, was in the air. But can you imagine being the nanny and you're on a plane and you're going somewhere and you're like, oh, we forgot to tell you that we're moving to Canada. Sorry, we didn't tell you. Sorry, you'll be taken away from your family, your friends. Essentially, they kidnapped this woman and took her to Canada, which to me represents slavery because what were slaves? Slaves were owned property. And Lauren, the nanny, remember, she's black. So you tell me how that looks. Maybe we should ask the sugars what they think of their black messiah for treating a black woman as if she's personal property. Let that resonate. Now, this last blind item for this video is going to be this one. Okay, with this last one, pay attention to the date, December 8th, 2018. What year are we in? 2022. Listen to this. Who knew that one person could bring down a family that centuries of time and wars could not do? That illiterate former actress is also sending out pages of notes to one of her very good friends to use in a book about the family. She signed all kinds of things, but no, they won't do anything but write her a check if she were to get ready to publish some very dark secrets. Let me remind you what this evil woman said from the recent interview that Meghan Markle gave to The Cut, which is an anti-monarchy magazine. Meghan is quoted saying, oh my gosh, this is what I was writing in my journal there? Yeah. She had a journal she was writing in. And then 
At the very end, she throws this in, casually. I think forgiveness is really important. It takes a lot more energy to not forgive, she says wisely. But it takes a lot of effort to forgive. I really have made an active effort, especially knowing that I can say anything, she says, her voice full of meaning. And then she is silent. She breathes in and smiles and breathes out and says, I have a lot to say until I don't. Do you like that? It is expected that she has a diary and well-documented everything from recordings to photos to, to stealing, I will bet. Now, I'm going to put money on the fact that right now, She's extorting the family and blackmailing them with this information, hence the reason why she was so adamant about seeing King Charles. Well, you know what? I believe it. I believe that the palace has information on this woman. And as we go through these blind items, we're going to pick up on some things that we didn't see at the time because we know a lot more now. I'm going to stop here to allow you guys to reflect and I will be back tomorrow with another video continuing on with these blind items. And believe it or not, there's a lot of them. So I think this will be covered in maybe two to three more videos because it's, it's pretty much her timeline. We'll be able to sort of get to the best truth that we can out of this exercise. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I will be back soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye. That was such a broad. <laughs>